speaking. Be careful what you say in my establishment. You never know who might be listening. Frank Sherrod, citizen of Grand City, carries with him the conviction to right wrongs and help the weak. To the criminals of the city, Frank Sharon is better known as the Ferryman, a ghostly avenger guided by the spirits of the underworld, wielding preternatural powers. His speakeasy aids his nocturnal crime-fighting activities and allows him access to Grand City's criminal underground. Tonight's episode... The Scarred and the Scared, Part 1. Tonight's episode begins in Grand City on Christmas Eve at a small automobile garage serving as a front for a major underground brewery operation where a few of the bootleggers are having a small party. It's going to be a merry, merry Christmas, boyo. <laughs> and how? Where did these broads come from? I think I'm falling in love here. These whiffs, oh, they're the big Tony's girls. Compliments of Boss Kincaid, like you said. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and to think, this was a crummy old garage a couple years ago. Now it's one of the best Thera houses in town. Well, what can you say? Can Jay's the bee's knees. <sighs> and here's the working hard. <laughs> or hardly working at all. Cheers. Salute. Cheers. Did you hear that? Yeah, sounds like someone's knocking on the door. Knocking on the door? Cut the music there. Who's knocking on our door? It's Christmas Eve. Police. Open up. Grand City Police! Open up in there! Oh, great. That's just great. Out of all the doors in Grand City to be knocking on, guess who's knocking on ours? Clean it up, fellas. Quick. Put the empty bottles in the back seat of that boiler. Stash that crate under those tarps. Yeah. Yeah, that's the ticket. Open up in there. Hey, hold your horses. We're coming. We're coming. All right, how do we look, fellas? Is this place tidy or what? Clean as a whistle. Good, good, good. Everything's good. Let them in. Merry Christmas, officers. Is there something I can help you out with? Yeah, get inside. This is a raid. I beg your pardon? Go on. Get back inside there. I ain't gonna tell you a third time, sonny. What's going on? Is there something I can help you out with, officers? Yeah, get up against the wall. Hands behind your head. Come on, move out. Yeah, that's it. Face the wall. All of you. Come on, ladies, you too. What's this all about, you prick? You can't just waltz up in here. You know who owns this place? What's this all about? Ah, dry up, will ya? Now, which one of you dirty dogs is Harvey Kincaid, boss of the Northside Gang? Look, he ain't here. Now, what's this about? Come on, you're, sc you're scaring the girls. Can't you see we're trying to have a party here, officers? What a shame. You see, my boss thought your boss was going to be here tonight. That's why he sent us. Who's your boss? Commissioner Gutter? Tell that palooka he can kiss my ass. Mr. Kincaid's with his family. It's Christmas Eve, for Christ's sake. Yeah, what are you, Jewish? <laughs> These two droppers? These dude droppers here still think we're coffers, Mr. Grafagna. What a riot! What the hell are you talking about? You're wearing uniforms, you got badges on. What do you mean you're not coppers? Hey, hey, hey! Get your old meat hooks off that boiler. That's a very fine automobile we're working on. This vehicle? Well, have you know this particular Model T coupe belongs to us? Dropped it off the other day. Here are the keys, see? Oh, yeah? Hey, what do you know? They're still here. Not sure if that's integrity at its finest or its dumbest. Holy crap! Those are Thompson submachine guns. Hey, turn around! Face the wall! Keep your hands behind your head! Where the hell did you get those choppers? That means you two are with Southside Gang, right? You're Scar Mouse Muscle, ain't you? Hey! Have a little respect! What do you want to do, Mr. O'Malley? Looks like our guest of honor ain't here tonight. Only one thing we can do, now that they've figured out who we are. Have a very merry Christmas, fellas! No, no, no! A few days later, Detective Reeves and his rookie partner are sitting at their desk at the A-City Precinct, discussing the mass homicide over the holiday. The press is dubbed the Christmas Eve Massacre. Witnesses said they saw an officer walk out with one suspect after the reported gunfire. That means they got him, right? So, which precinct did they take him to, Reeves? My guess is that wasn't cop or criminal. They were gangsters, dressed in police uniforms. After the shooting, one changed clothes and made it appear that the perp was apprehended. 
Who are the poor Johns they bumped off anyway? The employees of the garage. Women or prostitutes. Probably some kind of affiliation with Harvey Kincaid. The officers found a brewery operation in the basement, and this all happened on the north side. Who would do this? First time I've heard of this many people slaughtered in a decent neighborhood. Looks like they use Tommy guns, too. Uh, not sure. Could be George Capistrano making a power play. Capistrano? Wow. You think? Scarmouth's never been that brazen before. Of course, he was in Florida at the time, though. Hard to prove he knew or did anything about it. So, <laughs> we can't pinch him for the homicides. Witnesses aren't saying much about the men leaving the garage. If it was Capistrano, he would have paid him off in advance anyway. I heard, last year, he did over 30 million in bribes to cops, politicians, everyday folks to keep a lid on it. The old Scarmel's got this city bought and paid for. It's a shame we can't really do anything about it. Reeves, Commissioner wants to see you. Detective Reeves reporting, Commissioner. I was told you needed to see me. Yes, come in, Reeves. Come in, close the door. What's this all about? You have the blinds turned. You don't usually do that unless somebody's in trouble. Who are these fellas? In internal affairs? Detective? If I may, Commissioner. Take it away, Agent Brewster. Please, have a seat, Detective. You can relax. You're not in trouble. <clears throat> How do you do? I'm Agent Jack Brewster, Bureau of Investigation. How do you do, Mr. Brewster? That's Joe Kelly. He's an internal revenue agent. How do you do, Detective? And that's Mr. Charles Green. How do you do, Detective? They work with the Department of Treasury, straight out of Washington, D.C. Uh, it's uh, an honor, gentlemen. Now then, Mr. Kelly and I head a covert Bureau of Investigation Task Force, codenamed the Incorruptibles. We have been charged by Jim McGovern with taking down Grand City Public Enemy Number 1, George Thaddeus Capistrano. You ever heard of him? Capistrano? The gangster? You're pulling my leg, aren't you, Agent Brewster? Oh, you have heard of him. Of course I heard of him. I mean, he's the boss of the South Side Gang, and practically untouchable. Even got cops working here on his behalf. My partner and I were just talking about him a minute ago, too. With all due respect, though, uh, what charge could the Bureau possibly pin on him and follow through? Tax evasion, Detective Reeves. Something called tax evasion. In the last few years, we've been building a case against Capistrano alleging income tax evasion for the past five years. To date, we believe he owes $200,000 in back taxes to the U.S. government. Furthermore, we've been shutting down his illegal operations faster than a Kentucky Derby thoroughbred. Essentially, we're slowing down his revenue stream. Now, if we time this right, Capistrano will be charged and he won't be able to buy his way out. <laughs> what an angle. Wow. Tax evasion. All right. Why are you telling me this? There's no doubt in our minds, Detective. The massacre over the holiday was Capistrano's design. He is getting more and more desperate to hang on to or acquire more speaks. That type of violence can't and won't be tolerated in Grand City, though. We need your help, Detective. As you mentioned, there's a lot of cops under Capistrano's payroll. Commissioner Gutter here tells us you're an honest one, however. Yes, sir. Times are gone for honest men, son. You're a rare breed. You're one of us. Which brings me to our proposition for you. What we need is for you to go undercover. As a notary public, for Capistrano and confirm our evidence about his taxes. You will see, we are planning a sting a few nights from now. Capistrano is throwing a birthday party. If you can get a face-to-face -face with old Scarmel, get him to tell you about his books, then we can arrest him immediately on site. Our case is contingent on this information. Once undercover, Detective, it needs to stay that way until the job's done. Hopefully, that'll just take a couple of hours. <sighs> Everything all right, Detective? You're looking a bit upset. What if I say no, Mr. Brewster? Been making a lot of strides in another case I'm working on. Oh, the ferryman. Back me up here, Commissioner. <coughs> Reeves? Look, Detective, I think it's safe to say the Volstead Act won't be around forever. Prohibition is a fad, but as long as it is a crime to make, distribute, or consume alcohol, it is our duty to enforce the law. The ironic thing about you, Reeves, is that for all your honesty, you have been dishonest about one thing. I think you and I both know what that is, too. So, turn me down now. But all the men in this room have worked so many long nights, been away from their families for so long to get here. Well, you'll be lucky to be working in security at Macy's by the time I'm through with you. Do we understand each other? Can we count you in, Detective? Whatever you need. We'll comply, gentlemen. Isn't that right, Detective Reeves? The ferryman can wait. Yes, fine. Whatever you need, Agent Brewster. 
I'm your man. Good to hear, Detective. Now, we have an informant in Capistrano Circle you'll be working with. He's an Irishman named O'Malley. He'll introduce you to that evening and be your point of contact with us. Okay. Great. I want to be crystal clear, though, Reeves. O'Malley is not an officer of the law. He is a gangster that we have broken immunity with in exchange for testimony and other crimes committed by Capistrano. All right. And how exactly does one become a notary public in a few days, Agent Brewster? What the hell is that, even? Reading, Reeves. Lots and lots of reading. I'll be back this afternoon. Gentlemen. Good day, Commissioner. Detective. Detective. Commissioner, how can you let those fellas do this to me? I'm this close. This close to catching the ferryman. I just need a little more- Pipe down, Reeves. This precinct doesn't have the resources to waste on that spook right now. You're going to help these agents, Reeves, whether you like it or not. Dismissed. If I only had the resources, then I could stop the ferryman. That afternoon, we find the dubious George Capistrano ladling hot broth in a soup kitchen he owns for the homeless and needy of Grand City. Standing behind the counter, next to Capistrano, is his right-hand man and secret bureau of investigation informant Timothy O'Malley, briefing him on a recent bit of business. Thank you so much, Mr. Capistrano. And you, sir. How did we do last night, Mr. O'Malley? Fine. Just fine. You just bought yourself two more blind pigs, good, meaning good, good. we just might be able to offset Mr. Brewster and his G-men from shutting down your other joints yet. In other news, word around town is that Harvey Kincaid's fled the country for Canada. Don't worry, though. Mr. Grafagna's hot on his trail. So Grafagna to look in Montreal for Kincaid. I believe he's got some Canadian whiskey distilleries outside the city there. The Bureau of Investigations really made a stinking mess on my affairs. Hey, sir. We're gonna have to find another notary to handle the books for these new speaks you've been buying up. Somebody we can trust. A notary? Why? Scared the IRS is coming after us? Everybody else has, Mr. Capistrano. As a matter of fact, isn't your brother doing time for tax evasion? He only got a couple of years with that charge. But if you think we should... You all right there, St. Patrick? You seem kind of anxious. Something vexing you? No, no. It's nothing. It's something. Got you pretty worked up, too. Well, you see, I found a real gem of a juice joint out near the river last night. Sorry I didn't mention it before. It's owned by a man named Sharon. Never heard of him. Why are you in such a panic over his bar? It's hot, boss. Real hot. A lot of money being mined over there. Too much grain for just one fella, if you ask me. So, you're jealous of this Sharon? Is that it? It's a real piece of work, Mr. Capistrano. Didn't understand what he was disrespecting. All the other establishments were easy going when I walked in. I tell him, my boss wants to make you an offer. This one, this Sharon fellow was so, so arrogant about telling me no. So, it's a pride thing, huh? This Sharon fellow thinks he's a wise guy? God bless you, Mr. Capistrano. Bless you. You'll get back on your feet, fella. Go back again tonight, Mr. O'Malley. Let's use a little more persuasion. See if he'll budge. Now to work, Hogan. You want me to rough him up a bit, boss? God, no. After that Christmas Eve massacre bourgeois you pulled, that's the last thing we need, you hothead. This is a business, Mr. O'Malley. I'm a businessman. I want you to... I want you to... Double my offers with Mrs. Sharon. Double your offer? That's all. Fifty thousand clams for one drum. No speakeasy is worth that. Why do such a thing? Sometimes... <laughs> sometimes these idiots don't get it the first time around. And if it's as good as a business as you're describing, then it's worth the extra dough. I want to be very clear, though. No violence. Fish. Bless you, Mr. Capistrano. Thanks, madam. Wish I could just stick a pistol to his head. How's that, O'Malley? Nothing. Yes, boss. No violence. Oh, great. Look who it is. Chuck Brewster from the Bureau of Investigation? What's he doing here? Can't wait to get this fellow off my back. All right. Off with you, O'Malley. I want Brewster to know we're working together. Remember. To call Grafagna about Montreal, too. Very well, sir, and I'll go pay Sharon another visit later tonight. Good day. Ah, oh, Mr. Capistrana, how do you do? Agent Brewster. You know, I was just in the neighborhood looking to get some lunch. Well, what are you doing here? I thought with those checks they write you boys at the bureau, you could afford something better than a bowl of soup, pal. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do have a little extra cash on hand. What say you and I uh, go find a juice joint? You up for a drink? I haven't raided anything of yours yet today. Whoa, 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 whoa. Speakeasies? You know I don't know nothing about no speakeasies. Surely an agent of the federal government like yourself ought to know that. 
<laughs> you know what the irony of a dump like this is, Mr. Capistrano? No, enlighten me. These men in line who keep congratulating you and thanking you. Well, I'm willing to bet over half of them had decent jobs over the last few years. Might have families, too, but they took their paychecks and handed them over to you for suds coming out of one of your breweries. Maybe spent it on a girl at one of your cat houses. Or hell, they gambled it away and got taken by one of your crooked bookies. Now, they're thanking you for some lukewarm soup as if you performed some miracle when you're the damn reason they're on the street begging in the first place. That was a very well-orated speech there. How many times did you have to rehearse it, Brewster? Maybe they can't see what it is you really are, but I can. Mark my words, George Capistrano. Your days of disrespecting good people with your vices are numbered. I guarantee it. <gasps> are you done, Jack? Your soup is getting cold, and there's other people in line. Next. Oh, I'll be seeing you again real soon. Scott What did you call me? Easy, Georgie. Easy does it now. <laughs> I wouldn't want to show these people who you really are, right? Have a nice day. Later that night, Frank Sharon serves drinks with his trusty barkeep Miles, when all of a sudden, they spot a familiar, brutish Irishman approach the bar with a few other suspicious men. Here comes that angry Irishman from the other day, boss. Looks like he brought a couple of his goons with him tonight, too. Oh, great. Not this O'Malley fella again. Wonder what's in them briefcases they carry. How do you do, Mr. Sharon? Just as busy now as you were last week, eh? Boy, oh, good. What's your secret, sir? I'm sorry. Do I know you, sir? Forgot who I am already, huh, Mr. Sharon? Suppose me home for last week was pretty insulting. Only a little, Mr. Oh. 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 I still can't remember your name. My name's Timothy O'Malley. Now, is there a place we could talk business again? A lot of money in these briefcases, me boys and I looked over here this evening. <sighs> Miles? Yes, Mr. Frank? Tend the bar, please. I have an unscheduled business meeting here with Mr. O'Reilly. Sure thing, daddy -o. That's O'Malley, sir. Come on, Mr. O'Brien. Let's go out back and have a look-see. Alright, is this private enough for you? Appreciate you taking some time out to reconsider me boss's offer. Here, it won't take long. Wow, that's a... Uh... So, what do you think? All of this for your joint. It's as simple as that. You just give us the keys and walk away. Squat free. You know, another man tried to buy my joint once. Didn't go so well for him. Maybe you'd like to hear that story. Save it, Mr. Sharon. I need to tell my boss something after tonight. What's it going to be? Well, tell him. Tell him I ain't interested. And he can quit sending you around every week with more of his dirty money. This is my joint, you hear? And it's not for sale. Poor decision, Mr. Sharon. I'm sorry to hear that. Boys? What are you doing? Helping you reconsider. <coughs> or tell you what, <coughs> Mr. Sharon. You might want to consider getting some protection from you. Hush me drift. <coughs> I'll be back next week to sign you up. Remember this, sir. What can make your life a real living hell? Alright, well that's enough, boys. Let him be then. Mr. Frank, Mr. Frank, you alright, boss man? Just saw that O'Malley cat walking out with his thugs. Wow, it did real number on you. Come on, I'll help you up. There, that's it. Come on inside. Thanks, Miles. Ah, uh, they all just finished doing the Charleston on my face. Easy does it, Mr. Frank. That's it. One for that time. I'll tell you one thing, though. What's that? Timothy O'Malley ain't long for this world, Miles. Not long at all. About a week later, an unmarked automobile rolls into the parking lot of a well-known banquet hall with Jack Brewster behind the wheel and a disguised Henry Reeves sitting shotgun. 
looking to bust George Capistrano at his own birthday party. All right, tonight's tonight, Reeves. How are you feeling? Let's just get this over with. Give me the rundown one more time, Brewster. All right. So, you're going to walk up to the banquet hall and ask for Tim O'Malley. He's the informant. Most likely, you'll sit at a big round table with Capistrano and O'Malley. All we need you to do is confirm our evidence about the tax evasion charges. Okay. I think I can do this. Look at me, Reeves. In and out. Got it? Don't blow this, or I'm going to have to come in. Now... Are you packing any heat? You're all wet if you think I'm walking in there without my pistol, Brewster. Uh-huh. Give me the gun, Reeves. Come on, hand it over. Gee, thanks. You are not a copper tonight, Reeves. You are a notary public, remember? The only things you're taking in there is a tax form and a pencil. Good evening, sir. Checking in for the party. How do you do? I'm looking for a man named... Please with me. Now bugger off. Timothy O'Malley? Shut off, Reeves. And listen, I'm only going to say this once. We don't know each other. Got it? If you start sinking out there, try diving in to pull you out. Follow me. Corpus Verano is the flat of all these fellas sitting at the table in the center of the room. See the one with the score by his mouth? I see him. Old scar. Lead the way. Frank? Reeves? Reeves! What are you doing? Keep walking! Thought I saw something I do. Could have sworn. Quit Dorian Reeves! Mr. Capistrano! Mr. Capistrano, I'd like to introduce you to our new notary, Henry Reeves. Mr. Reeves, how do you do? It's a pleasure. Pleasure is all mine, Mr. Capistrano. Just had some preliminary questions about back taxes I wanted to discuss with you this evening. Should only take a few minutes. Back taxes? Boy, everybody's looking for something. Don't you see we're having a party here, Mr. Reeves? My apologies, sir. The fella's all business, O'Malley. Usually I shake a man's hand when I'm introduced. Maybe have a drink with him before we start talking turkey. Mr. Capistrano, Mr. Capistrano, a package has just arrived for you right here. What a wonderful surprise. Let's open it, Mr. O'Malley. So, Mr. Mr. Capistrano, about those taxes... Hmm. Looks like whiskey. I don't know who's it from. Look, there's a note that came along with it. Looks like there's something under these bottles. Here's to the new you, Scarma. HK. What is that? Mr. Capistrano, don't no, open the- No! No! Ah, my face! The soul of my face! Get me out of here! Ah, hey! Get out of here! This, this wasn't part of the plan. I need to talk to him about the taxes, remember? Not now! Oh, Christ, who's that? It's him. It's the ferryman! Timothy O'Malley. Hell hath sent the harbinger of doom for you this evening. No tonight, freak! Take Are this! Are you crazy? That's the ferryman, bub. Put your gun away. You're gonna... Don't move. Jack Brewster. Bureau uh... oh uh, of an investigation. <clears throat> oh no, Brewster. Brewster just walked in and I shot him. Now... You're coming with me. No! Abandon hope, all ye who enter a life of crime, for the ferryman awaits upon the other side.